Hello there. This lecture let's look at classes. All modern programming languages have classes and Python is no exception. Let's first define a class. What is a class? Class is nothing but a template. You can call it a design or a blueprint. We use these templates for making or creating new objects. Why do we need classes? What is the advantage of classes? The classes gives you the ability to group your data and methods in a way that best meets your business needs. So it is just basically kind of customizing a data type which allows you the kind of things that you would like to keep together for your business use. How do we create a class? If I were to create a class called car, I would use the keyword class and then the class name and a colon. Notice that the C here is capital in car. This is the naming convention. It doesn't have to be capital, but it is the naming convention. So sticking to the naming convention, we should capitalize the first character of each word in a class name. For example, if I were to call this car class, then I would capitalize C for the word car and C for the word class. Again, this is just the naming convention. So what happens when you define a class? When you define a class using this keyword class, for example here class car it does not actually create a car yet all we have done here is that we are creating an instruction manual for constructing car objects we will see that a little later what it means now cars have many attributes for example make of the car, model of the car, color of the car, and many other attributes. We are going to look at how do we use attributes of an object and how those attributes are used inside a class and the method that we use inside a class. So let's go back here and create a class so we create a class by using the keyword class and then we name the class car open and close parentheses and a colon so now we have created a class called car notice the capital c here for the class name let's define a method here and we will call that available cars for example so we'll say so we will call this available underscore car will underscore call and notice this magic keyword self appeared here let me show you again the moment i type the open parenthesis it automatically populated the word self here we will come back to this in a short while and here what we want to do is we want to print a message that says red ford mustang so make and model but that magic keyword we can't forget this magic keyword so let's put that magic keyword in front of every argument okay I haven't forgotten about that we will talk about that shortly now we have the class here so let's create an instance of this class an instance is also referred to creating that new object we have a car class as we said earlier this is nothing but a template so using this template 
I want to create a new object and I want to call that object car1. So I say car1 is equal to instance of this car class. So I would use the class name and then open and close parentheses. Now this is a new object that is created using this car class. The self that we use here, this new object that you see here, car1, if we were to call this method for car1, car1 is substituted here for self. So this would be, if one were to visualize this, this would become define a will car car1 and print car1.color, car1.make, car1.model. This car1, the object name, is substituted here for the self. So self basically means that the object that you are calling it for, that is for that object. So it basically holds the object name when you call this method. Now, we said that these cars have certain attributes. So if you want to assign those attributes to car1, we would say car1 dot color, for example, is equal to red and car1 dot make is equal to Ford and car1 dot model is equal to Mustang. If I want to call this method now available car, I can just say car1. This is the object. The method now, method name, which is available available car that's all i need to do i don't have to do anything else cell so let's run this one notice it displays red ford mustang we could also create another object called we can call it car2 we can create as many objects as we want that's what the templates mean you have a template and you can use that template for creating new objects. So let's create another object. And we will call this one car2. And this would be, the color would be blue. And it is uh, Nissan. And the model is Ultima. Now, if when we car car two, this method for car two, car two will be substituted here for the self. So it will become car two color, car two make, car two model. Let's run it. Notice that for the car two, it displays blue Nissan Ultima. Now, if you look at this code, we could we can continue creating more and more objects. We can create car 3, car 4, car 10, and so on and so forth. But there is, that would mean a lot of code. And we are basically duplicating this code for all these uh, attributes that it has. To assign values to these attributes, we keep on duplicating all this code there for car 1 and then for car 2 and if we were to create more objects car 3 car 4 we would have to duplicate all these for every single new objects that we create that is one issue the second issue is that if you look here for example the word color the word color here if i were to change this color to c o l o u r and i run this when we are going to get a syntax error because it's not going to match the color here and then it's going to complain that this doesn't have the 
word C O L O R. Let's run it and it's going to generate an error. Notice that it's complaining that car object does not have attribute color and that's because we changed the variable name here. So that is another issue that we have. Now how can we overcome this problem? There is a special method called underscore underscore init underscore underscore. That method is automatically called every time we create a new object. Let's first define the method and then we will see how it works. So we will say define underscore underscore init underscore underscore and then open and close parenthesis. Again the magic word self appears here automatically. Now we will define the arguments that we expect to receive here. So what do we expect here? We expect color, make and model here, right? So we will define arguments to receive those three additional parameter which is color, make and model. Once we have done that, we need to assign these to the object variables itself, the object attributes itself. So we will say self dot color is equal to color self dot make is equal to make and self dot model is equal to model. Again, to go over the self argument, when we say car1 is equal to car, this car1 object is going to be substituted here in self. So this would basically read car1 dot color is equal to whatever color we pass here, car1 dot make is equal to the make of the car that we pass here it's assigned back to this one car one dot model would be assigned the value that we pass here in this model two more things about this one the word self it doesn't have to be self we can call it something else if we like but the convention is that we keep this self so sticking to the convention we will call it we'll just call this self. Similarly, if you look at here, we say self.color is color, self.make is make, and self.model is model, etc. We don't have to give these exact same name as the one that we are receiving here. We can call this something different. We can call this color2, for example, make2, model2, but then you will have to change those here as well, color2, make2, model2, etc. But the naming convention is that we keep these the same as the arguments that we receive in terms of its name. So we give it the same name as the arguments that we have here. Again, this is just the naming convention. It doesn't have to be this way, but the naming convention, so sticking to the naming convention, we should do this. Now, this code that we have here, becomes redundant. We do not need this code. We can pass all these values directly here and they will be received by the init method inside this car class. That is number one. Number two, this issue that we have of color or spelling something different than this one, that also goes away even though here we are going to pass these values directly but if you were to assign these values to a variables and pass those variables we could have named those variables anything for example for color c o l o u r and i could have passed c o l o u r well let's do this anyway so let's define a variable c o o u r and we will call it red okay so now when we create this new object car i want to pass color to it so i will pass c o l o u r comma and then I want to pass the make of the car which is Ford so let's pass Ford here 
and then the model of the car which is Mustang let's comment out this car too for now now when I create this car one object using car class and pass these attributes of the car to it the moment this line is executed the first thing that is going to happen is execution of this method and this is done automatically it will substitute what I pass from here into this color make and model it will say car1 color is equal to the color that we pass car1 model a uh, make is equal to the make that we pass and car1 model is equal to the model that we pass this whole thing becomes redundant we no longer need this one we delete that one and let's run it so notice it gives me exactly the same thing as we had before but this is much cleaner we do not have that additional code here that is number one number two we don't have to worry about what we call our variables here it is no longer dependent on the name of our variables because all those variables whatever we want to call them will be received here it uses its own variables names that are received here and are assigned to the object attributes here and then we are using those objects attributes to print out this message so it takes care of that problem as well now let's do the same thing for car 2 so for car 2 we had the color of the car 2 is blue and the make is Nissan and model is Ultima when we do that we no longer need this code either and then we just basically call this car method so it should give us the information of this available car for this one as well let's run it notice that it displays blue Nissan Altima so if you really look at this one this one now the code is much cleaner than what it was before secondly we no longer worry about what the variable names are when new objects is created because we take care of it by receiving them in the init method and the third thing is that other methods that we use in here again that we need not worry about what would be the variables names because now we are relying on the variable names that come in with the object itself and then we make use of those um, attributes of the objects that were received here in the init method and we are using all those attributes in available car method um, I think I already mentioned that or I, if I did not these things if you look at it these look exactly like the functions that you have seen before these are functions in reality but these functions when they are defined inside a class they are referred to as methods again call it a convention but that's how they are called when a function is inside a class they are referred to as method it's just the semantics so that is it for the classes hello there in our previous lecture on classes we learned how to define a class and how to create instances of that class we also learned about the init method how this init method initializes instance level variables that is each time an instance is created init method is automatically executed and the values for these arguments are passed 
by the instance which are then stored for that particular instance using the self dot and the attribute of that particular instance. We notice that when we use car1, everything that we have for car1 using this self dot attribute, we have all the values for car1. Similarly, when we create a new instance car2, all the values for car2 are again stored for that car2 instance using self dot attributes and so on that we assign here. So this lecture we are going to look at class level variables. Class level variables are different than instance level variables in that the class level variables are shared by all instances of a class. So in this example, every individual instance, for example, car1 has its own variable, car2 has its own variable. If we were to have class level variables, those variables would be available to both of these instances. So again, class level variables are shared by all instances of a class. Instance level variables are unique for each instance. Now, before we get into that, let's add another argument here uh, for the car price and we will call it price. And then we will assign this attribute price by the price that we pass here. And we will also print, when we check for available cars, the price is part of that whole big string where we have the car, the make, the model. So we will also include price there. Since we have this additional argument here, we need to pass a value for that. So let's say Mustang cost $50,000 and Altima cost $40,000. Now, if we run this one, we will also have the price of the car. Notice that red Ford Mustang, $50,000, blue Nissan Altima, $40,000. Now, let's assume that we want to offer a discounted price for these cars. First, let's create a new method and we will call it discounted rate or discounted price. and we will display the value of discounted price by saying discounted price so we want to reduce the price by 10 percent so we will take this price and multiply that by 0 0.9 so that we will have reduced price and maybe here we want to also now want to display the reduced price so we will say car1 dot discounted price and we can do the same thing for car2 and let's run this one so notice that we have the original price here and then we have the discounted price $45,000 for Mustang which is reduced by 10% similarly for Ultima the original price of $40,000 is reduced by 10% and we have discounted price of $36,000 now this is okay but the this is kind of rigid we do not have the flexibility. We are stuck with this 0.9% hard-coded value. We can improve this by introducing a variable. So let's do that. And this variable is going to be class level variable. What makes this class level variable that we are defining this variable 
outside of these methods it is at the top after we define this class car class we are going to define that new variable which is going to be class level variable so let's call it discount rate and that is equal to 0 0.9 percent so now instead of using this hard-coded value we can use discount rate but if we do not qualify this discount rate with the class name or with the instance name instance name in this case are all these self 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 etc this will generate an error if we run this as is we are going to get an error let's run it and see the error notice that it is complaining about that discount rate is not defined so we need to qualify this either with the class name or with the instance in instance meaning self dot and then discount rate so now we have qualified this with car let's run it notice that it gives us all the same results that we saw earlier mustang is discounted by 10 percent similarly ultima is discounted by 10 percent so we have the discounted prices now this when we use the class with this discount rate one disadvantage that we have is that we lose the ability to override this rate at instance level so it is more flexible if we define this at instance level as opposed to class level the variable is at class level we are not changing that one the reference here instead of having a reference to the class let's use self here that means instance now if we run this one we will get all the same values but i will explain why this is more flexible in a minute if you look at the output we have the original price and then the discounted price which is 10 percent discounted and again original price for ultima and the discounted price which is discounted by 10 percent what happens is that when it encounters a variable when the system encounters a variable first it is going to look for that variable within the instance itself if it doesn't find it since we don't have this variable in this for the instance then it's going to move up to the class level and it's going to check for that variable in the class at the class level and since we have this variable available at the class level so it picks up the rate from there and that is the rate that it uses we can also display something called name spaces so for example if you were to say print car one dot underscore underscore dict underscore underscore and let's repeat this for car two and for the class as well so let's display it for all three of them and this would be the class which is capital c r run this one and then we'll go over this one what it displays notice that for car one you can see it says color is red make is ford model is mustang and price is fifty thousand dollars for car two color is blue make is nissan model is ultima and price is forty thousand dollars there is no mention anywhere in these two instances of the discount rate but if you look at the class level this is the class level information that we are seeing here here you can see the discount rate of 0 0.9 this is the rate that is used in this discount rate variable that you see here self dot discount as i said earlier first the system is going to look for this variable in the instance itself 
if it doesn't find it it moves up to the class level and it will look for this variable in the class level and since it is defined at class level that's where it picks up this and is used here so it reduces the price by 10 percent and that is the reason why we have the reduction for both car at 10 percent because we are using class level variable and we do not have any particular discount for any of these cars now let's say that we want to override this class level rate by a different discount for a particular car for example if we want to discount mustang instead of discounting it by 10 percent we only want to discount that by five percent since we are using self -dis dot discount rate now we have the ability to do that we can cr create instance level variable for this discounted rate so we will say car one dot discount rate And this we can set to let's say 0 0.95 so now the Mustang will be discounted by 5% Nissan will still be discounted by 10% because it doesn't have its own instance variable so it's going to use class level variable while Mustang will use its own discounted rate so in other words it will override class level variable so let's run it and see Now, if you look at the price here, the Mustang original price is $50,000 and the discounted price now shows $47,500. So the original price of $50,000 is only discounted by 5%. But the Ultima original price $40,000 is still discounted by 10% and we can see the discounted price as $36,000. If we look at the namespaces variables now, notice for the mustang color red make ford model mustang etc price fifty thousand notice this variable here discount rate 0 0.95 we have this for the mustang because we are creating a discount rate here for this car one which is mustang we do not have this discount rate here if you look at this car two we have all the other variables except the discount it doesn't have its own so car 2 is going to pick up the discount rate of the class level which is here defined at 9% and that's why we see 10% discount for Nissan and 5% discount for Mustang because Mustang has its own rate so this in this example it is better to use the instance and refer to this by cell because it gives you the flexibility to override class level rates if you do not have instance level rate it will use class level rates but if you supply instance level rate as we did here then it will use instance level rates so this is more flexible and it's better for this particular case now could there be cases where you want to strictly use class level variables yes there are for example if you want to know how many cars do we have in our inventory that information is not specific to a particular car we just want to know how many cars do we have in our inventory so for that we can define another class level variables and we will call it total cars and let's set it to zero initially since we know that init method is executed for every instance that we create so there, that is where we will increment this total cars by one so we will say total cars is equal to one but we have to qualify this by the class itself so we'll have to put car in front of it now what this means is that this total is at the class level 
we cannot override this by instance level variables or instance level changes because we are specifically referring to this by the class itself we have qualified this with the class name and this is one of those cases which you can strictly use class for this kind of information we want to know the total number of cars that we have in our inventory so now we have this variable we can display since we know that every time we create an instance that is going to be executed let's display the total number of cars that we have so we can say print total cars let's make this capital notice that we have this total cars equal to 2 because we have two instances of this class to recap class level variables are shared by all instances of a class instance level variables are unique for each instance to define class level variables we define those variables at the top after we define a class we have the ability to override class level variables by instance level variables using self dot and then the variable name that we have defined here for class and then we can the, if we wish to apply a different rate we will define our own rate for a particular instance as you can see here for car one if you do not specify or you do not define instance level variable it will then automatically look for the variable at class level if it finds one there it will use that variable so that is it for now hello there let's draw a line graph using matplotlib so we start by importing import matplotlib this has a module called pyplot and we want to create an alias for it and we will call that plt the plt that we are using here is just basically an alias that instead of using pyplot every time we need to refer to pyplot we can use this alias which is PLT it just makes it easier in, in terms of typing we don't have to type this whole word instead we can just use this PLT which is a reference to PyPlot okay what we want to do is we want to show some data some sales data for ice cream sales from January through December here I have created these months that run from January to December. Let's copy these ones and apply it here. I also have sales data from January through December for ice cream sales. Let's copy that as well. Okay, so now we have both the data and the months. The figures here directly corresponds to the months that we see here. For example, January $10,000, February $12,500, and so on. December $13,500. This figure directly corresponds to the month that we see that we have assigned to month X. Ice underscore Y is for ice cream. I'm just, I'm just using the short form ice and Y I'm using Y here because I want to designate this that this is data for Y axis month X is the data for X axis of the graph to draw the graph all we have to say is PLT plot and in parentheses we give the X axis and Y axis so for the X axis we have month underscore X comma ice underscore Y to show the graph we need to say plot that show open and close parentheses let's run it 
okay so we have our graph here okay we have a simple graph it shows the data here for x-axis from January through December and then we have the sales figure from 10,000 to going up to 35, 36,000 and here is the graph it doesn't have anything there is no label for x-axis, y-axis and there is no title etc so let's add the title and labels for x and y To add a title, you would say plt dot title, and then in parentheses we give the title that we want to call it. So this is sales data from January to December. So that would be the title, and the labels we want to label x-axis and y axis to do that we would say plt x label and in parentheses we will give the name of x lab, x uh, the labels for the x axis which is months and for the y axis plt dot y label and that is sales okay let's run this one now right as you can see here now we have the label here months and the sales and we also have a title here sales data from January through December here you see this legend here if you want to save this graph you hit the save button and you can save it as a PNG there is for zooming if you want to zoom certain parts of the graph you choose zoom and then as you can see it zooms it these left and right arrow keys are undo and redo so if I hit left the first step was undone now the second step was undone the right arrow redo so again those ones and the home it will just display the graph as we saw it initially here we can also use this one this is for pen axis with you can use left and right mouse with it when selected here you can see it and if you use the right mouse you can stretch it up or downward left right etc okay so now we got the title we have the labels and we have a graph here you can also change the thickness of the line if you like to do that we can add here for example we can say line width is equal to let's make it 3 and run it okay so now the line you can see it it's a little thick let's make it even thicker let's make it four or five all right so now you can see it's a fairly thick line you can also change the color if you like so you can say color and let's make it red R for red and let's run it okay so now the color is red all right so we have this one now let's add some more data I also have data for french fries or fries sale again running from January through December let's copy that data for the fries that we have Now we want to draw the same graph for fries as well. All we have to do is just duplicate this line and months are going to be the same so we can use month x for fries we will change this to fry 
and the color let's make this green and run it okay so now we have here two graphs here if you look at it the ice cream in January when it is cold the sales is low and as the weather becomes warmer and warmer the sale increases until it reaches peak somewhere around it, August and then it begins to decline again as the weather becomes colder. For the fries when the weather is cold the sale is highest in January and then as we move through the year February, March, April, May, etc. the sale declines as the weather becomes warmer and it reaches the bottom in August and then again as the weather becomes to cool down the sales picks up again and it moves, moves up okay so we got a few things here now I think it would be nice if we had a legend here so that we know which line represent what type of data so let's add a legend here to add a legend we will say plt dark legend open and close parenthesis but we need to add labels here for this legends so for the ice cream we will add a label equals and we'll call it ice cream and for the fries we will add a label and that will be called fries okay let's run it again okay so now we have a legend here that we can see red line represent ice cream and green line represent fries um, I think we should also add a grid here here when you follow this line sometimes it's hard to see where these lines are falling in terms of the months and the sales figures so let's add a grid to it that would make it uh, a little easier to follow the graph properly to add a grid all we have to do is to say add a grid somewhere okay let's insert it here so we would say plt dot grid open and close brackets and that's all we need let's run it okay so now we have a grid here it makes it easier you can see that in August the ice cream peaks and similarly the fries it has it hits the bottom in August and then accordingly as the weather becomes colder the sale begins to increase similarly for the ice cream as the weather becomes colder the sale begins to drop I think this would do it for now hello there this lecture we are going to create some bar charts the code that you see here is exactly the same code that we used in previous lecture for drawing line graph the only thing that I have removed from that code is the code that was used for drawing the line graph so those two lines have been removed the rest of the code is exactly the same that we saw in earlier lecture so to use or to draw bar charts we refer to this plt which is a reference to pi plot so you say plt dot and instead of saying plot we will say bar for the bar chart and then we give the x-axis and y-axis values to it which is month underscore x comma for the ice cream it is ice underscore y and we do the same thing for the fries so we we'll say plt dot bar month x comma fry underscore y and let's run it after that we know that there will be certain missing values for example we won't have the legend because we don't have anything here for the legend the custom colors etc won't be there because we don't have any 
code for custom colors, etc. Let's run this and see what kind of bar charts do we get. Okay, so here is the bar chart. As mentioned, we don't have the legend. That is fine. Uh, if you look at the bars here, notice that we only see ice cream data for some of the months. We don't really see ice cream data for every month here. The reason for that is, if you look at the code here, first we draw this bar charts for the ice cream, then we draw bar charts for the fries. So for all those cases where fries sale is more than ice cream sale, the fries sale has covered, completely covered the ice cream data because the bar, ice cream bar was drawn first on top of it, then it lays this other layer for the fries one. So it completely covered the ice cream bar. The reason that we see part of the ice cream bars here because in these ones the ice cream sale is more than the fries sale. So that's why we see these bars here. What we would like to do is that we would like to shift these bars in a way that we can see data both for the ice cream as well as the fries. To do that we are going to make use of that NumPy that we installed earlier. Let's go back to the code. Okay, so let's import NumPy and we will create alias for NumPy and we will call it NP for NumPy. So when we want to refer to NumPy, we can use this NP instead of typing this whole word NumPy. And I want to create a variable here. I want to call it x underscore idx. And here I want to use a function that exists in NumPy that is going to create a list of numbers. And that function is called arrange. NP here is a reference to this NumPy. And I want to create a list of numbers that would be equivalent to the number of months that we have. We have 12 months there. So I will say length of month underscore x. So this will create a numeric list which will have 12 entries. And that will be assigned to this variable x underscore idx. Let me create another variable and I want to call that bar width, b width. And I want to set that to 0 0.30. I will explain this in a minute what we are going to use this one for. Okay, now when we come here to plotting this bar chart, instead of referring to month x, now I want to use this x idx. Why I want to use this xidx? Because this xidx is a numeric value, as I said earlier, that when we use this function, it is going to create a list of numbers. So it will give us a list of 12 numbers. We have 12 months here. So now I have a numeric value, and what I want to do is I want to shift the bar to the left. So I want to subtract this band width from it, which I have assigned 0 0.30 to it. So I will say minus b width. So now the ice cream bar will be shifted to the left by this 0 0.30. And what I also want to do is the bar by default when it is created it has a width of 0 0.80. I want to reduce that width and I want to make that width also 0 0.30 so I can say width is equal to B width. We want to do the same thing here but we need not to subtract anything for the fries bar because when we shift the ice cream bar to the left the fries bars 
will fall into place automatically next to the ice cream bar but we want to reduce the width of this bar as well so we will say width is equal to b width let's run this one now and see what do we get okay so we have these bars here now you see it is much better now we can see data both for ice cream and fries which were previously completely covered in all those cases where the ice cream the fries um, sale was greater than the ice cream sale but now we have all of them and we also have some white spaces between those bars so just to demonstrate that if we change this number it will give us that we, if we increase this number we will see thicker bars so let's change this to 0 0.50 and run it again notice now the bars are much thicker and there are no white spaces here that we saw earlier we can also now use the custom colors that we saw earlier if you want to add color and we can make this red for the ice cream and we can make color green for the fries let's run this again and now you can see we have those red and green colors and now let's add the legend as well to add the legend we just need to add label and this is going to be ice cream and we want to add a label for fries as well so label we already have the legend here all we need is just the labels and then the legend will do its trick and we will see this legend appearing there let's run it okay so now we have the legend red is for the ice cream and green is for the fries to recap initially when we had these bar charts since we were drawing the ice cream bar chart first followed by the fries bar charts so in those cases where the sales of ice cream was less than the sales of fries the fries bar chart completely covered ice cream bars to get around that issue we used a function of numpy that is called a range which gives us a numeric values and we got the same number of numeric values that we have the months here in other words we got 12 numeric values using this function that is inside numpy so we imported numpy and we created an alias for it np and then we defined a variable x underscore idx and refer to this numpy by its alias np and then used a function in there that's called arranged and we asked for 12 numeric values we defined another variable v width and we set it to initially 0 0.30 now it's 0 0.50 that is fine we just want to use this for the shifting of those bars and here instead of referring to the month now we use this numeric value that we created here so that numeric value minus the width of the bar that we defined here so what this will do is that the first bar which is drawn for the ice cream it will be shifted to the left and then we also the bend the bar width by default it is 0 0.80 so we reduce that to the band width which is 0.5 now to make the bar a little thinner for the fries bar we did not do any shifting because once we shift the ice cream bar to the left the fries bar will fall into place on the right hand side of the ice cream bar by itself but we reduce the width of the bar for the 
price as well so that we see both bars of the same width and then we added the custom colors and the labels etc here for the legend that would do it for now hello there let's create a pie chart that will show data ice cream sales data for the first six months of the year so we will start by importing matplotlib pie plot and we want to create an alias for this we will call it as plt the plt here is a reference to this matplotlib dot pie plot so every time we want to refer this word instead of typing this whole word matplotlib dot pie plot we can just type plt and that is a reference to this so we will use the shorthand plt i have some data for the ice cream sales so we have months here from january through june and the sales figures for those ice cream so let's copy this The sales figures that we have here, they directly co correspond to these month names. So for January, we have 10,000 sales. For February, 12,500 and so on. And for June, we have 25,700. To create the chart, we say PLT dot, and it's going to be a pie chart. And we give the sales figure. And then the name for the names, we want to use these month names. So we will say labels. and month to show the chart we say plt dot show open and close parentheses let's run it okay so we have our chart here we have the month names and these different slices representing sales of ice cream for different months one thing notice that we have January here um, starting sort of on the right hand side and it goes January, February, March and so on. Let's make some changes so that we will see January right here at the top and then February and so on. And let's, let's also add uh, a title here. To add the title, we will say plt title and in parentheses we are at the text that we want to show as title so this is uh, ice cream sale data from January through June and we can add start angle so that we show January right at the top. So we say start angle and we set this to 90 degrees. Let's run it and see what kind of chart do we see now. Okay, so now we have the title here, ice cream sales data from January through June. And also notice that January starts here, right at the top at 90 degree angle. And then it goes from there, February, March, April, May, and June. We can also add percentages for these slices so that we know what percent each slice represents of the entire pie. Let's add percentages. To add percentages, we say auto PCT and we give it a format and the format is going to be percent sign 1.1 F percent percent this point one represents one decimal place if you want two decimal places we can change this to two and then it will give us two decimal places so let's run it and see what kind of percentages we see for each slice now okay so now we have the percentages here january 9.9 percent .9 february this and so on for june that was the highest figure 25.4 percent let's show two decimal places 
so we can change this to two and now if you run it we will see two decimal places as you can see now we have two decimal places here for each slice we can also add lines to just basically make these slices stand out we can add line here for each slice let's do that to add lines to those slices we can use wedge preps so wedge props and this is going to be a dictionary so we put edge color colon and we want to show black lines so black let's also create some more space here let's run it and see what kind of charts do we have now okay so here you notice that now we have these lines so it makes it look a bit better than before okay what else can we do with this thing if we want to emphasize let's say uh, one of these um, sales um, let, let's run it let's let's look at the chart again and then we'll go from there let's say we want to show the June which has the highest sale we want this piece to be a little bit outside of the rest of the pie we can use something called explode so let's add for June that so we can define a variable which is explode and here we have a list of value for every month so we have six months here we don't want to change anything for January we put zero there we don't want to change anything for February so zero March April May and for June we want to make this 0 0.1 and then here we want to say e explode is equal to explode now let's run it okay so you notice that now this one is pushed out a little bit the bigger this number is going to be the more this will be pushed outside so let's just make that 0 0.2 and run it again notice that even this one is now pushed out even more that will do it for now